Hey, Flock Mike here from Epic Duck Studios, and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today, I'm going to be painting Hulk from Marvel United by Cool Mini or Not Games. Now, you can see here, he's not primed yet, so I'm going to go ahead and just get a layer brush on primer on this and get started. I'm going to be using the card art here for reference, trying to pull as many of the colors and sort of the visual language from this as I possibly can. So that's my reference right there. That's what I'm going to be working towards. Let's get started. So I'm trying to make some color choices by matching colors to the card art, and it looks like Skarsnik Green is going to be a really good match for the light color, with Warboss Green being a good match for the tones a little bit further down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to base coat with Skarsnik, and then dry brush the darker green in from the bottom to give me an overall gradient across the whole model. So it's worth noting that Skarsnik Green is not a opaque enough color to do a solid base coat, so I'm going to take probably two or three coats to really cover everything up. And that's okay, there's no problem with doing multiple layers on a base coat. My painting preference is to try and get things done in as few coats as possible while not gumming the model up. And what you'll see is that as I apply the paint to the model, I use a very steady flicking motion to kind of spread the paint across the model. And spreading the paint like this is what really prevents it from gumming detail up. It helps it cover a wider area and lets you get the most value out of the minimal amount of paint and the least number of coats. So at this point, I'm just looking around the model, looking for anywhere a little bit of the gray primer might be showing through the Skarsnik green and just adding a second coat there. Then I'm going to move on to Hulk's feet. Right, with that base coat down, it's time for some dry brushing. I'm going to be using two of my favorite dry brushing tools, the Elf Cosmetics Eye Crease Brush and an old pair of my kids' pants. So this is the leg of a size three toddler pant with a hole cut for my thumb, and I wear this on my left hand so I have something to blot my paintbrush off onto. You might also see other painters doing something similar. This is renowned as the Wapple sock. James Wapple kind of pioneered this by cutting off the toe of old socks and wearing them on his left hand as well. It's the same idea, it's just an old piece of cloth. Basically you're wearing a rag, and it's just somewhere to blot your paintbrush off. It just happens that kids' pants are roughly the same size as adult socks, and my kid goes through those, so it's easy to cut a leg off, throw it on my hand, and there we go. Plus, it has dinosaurs on it. So I'm dry brushing this deeper green on the underside of the model, so underneath the arms, around the waist, and around the feet, and basically using that to pull a darker green up, you know, towards, from the bottom of the model up towards the top. And all it does is give us just some color gradients, some modulations, so that the model's just not a big chunk of flat green because it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty thick, hefty model. And we don't want just one shade of green happening across that whole area. Now I'm also putting a little bit into the palm of the hand just to help the fingers stand out a little bit. So now I'm going to come back in and just dry brush a little more Skarsnik green, the lighter green, back over that just because some of the darker green, the Warboss green, kind of, you know, took over some areas I didn't really want it to. So I'm just kind of pushing it back down again. So on the card art, Hulk has this blue glow coming from underneath, and I wanted to replicate that. So I'm going through a couple different blues here, trying to pick a color I think works well. I first match Fenrisian Grey and Blue Horror, and decide they're both a little bit too pale. So I just settle on Lothurn Blue, even though it's a fair bit more saturated than the color that's present there. I figure I'll lay this down first, and I can add some white into it afterwards if I think it looks a little bit too bright, too distinct. So I'm starting with Lothurn Blue. It's probably a mistake, I don't know if I really like it or not, but we'll see where it goes. Now this is kind of an indirect source of light, there's not something glowing on the base or anything that's really creating this, it's just an environmental reflection or maybe there's, you know, some people finding their energy weapons around them. It doesn't have a specific source and so it can kind of come from anywhere and everywhere. And so the way I'm envisioning this working is because we're looking at Carter and trying to apply a 2D aspect to a 3D model is I'm envisioning it kind of just coming up from the ground and sort of just a little bit off of Hulk's left side. So there's just a little bit of a slant to it. So you can see I'm kind of just biasing everything over that way. 
putting this blue light really where I would normally put a shadow. And now one thing when you look back at the card art, what you'll notice is there is a deep green shadow with the blue little highlight sitting just underneath it. And the reason I'm doing the blue first is if there's any areas where I feel I've kind of overdone it or just don't like the look of it, I'm going with the shadows later anyway, so it gives me a chance to correct this highlight at the same time as I lay the shadow in. Now, we don't have a visual reference for the back of Hulk. You know, there's no card art showing his back, and that's fine. All I really need to do is know that my blue is coming from, you know, underneath the model and just a little bit off to the left, and that I can correct any mistakes I make. If I put an area of blue in that's just kind of dominant, it's a little too large, shadows will fix it later. And speaking of those shadows, I've decided that P3's Mage Hunter Green is a really good fit. It's a nice, deep, kind of desaturated green, so it's going to make a nice counterpoint to that deeper green we created with the Warboss Green earlier. Now I'm going to test out here on the side of the face, because the face has a lot of interesting geometry to it, and I want to make sure that this green really helps capture that detail. So I'm just working it in, kind of highlighting the cheekbone, the side of the head, the temple and just working through these different shapes, these different, you know, planes of Hulk's face, and making sure that the Mage Hunter Green is a good fit for what I'm trying to do here. Now, I think the Mage Hunter Green is just a little bit less saturated than I would have liked. It's a little bit more of a green-gray, but I'm going to go ahead with it anyhow. I think it's working for me. It's just maybe not quite the color I thought it was going to be. And that's a little bit of the problem with looking at paint. You know, the way I was comparing it was holding the pot up, and of course the pot or the bottle does affect the color a little bit. You don't quite see the true color when you're looking through a, you know, semi-opaque plastic. Want to make sure I get a nice deep shadow underneath the eyebrow ridges, and then a little bit of a crease where, you know, the two different eyebrows meet, where there'd be a little bit of a scowl. So here I'm adding a shadow on the forehead where the hair hangs over it. So it's basically a forced drop shadow from the hair. And this is what really, one of those small little things that really helps sell the illustration effect. Because the shadow is a permanent part of the model. And no matter what angle you look at it, you know, the hair is casting that little downlight shadow. And it really is just one of those things that it's a quick, easy to add detail that really creates the illusion of illustration. So at this point I'm working my way around Hulk, adding these shadows just above all the blue highlights I've created, you know, basically on the downward curve of all his different muscle groups, underneath the hand, underneath the arm, places like that. Now there's some defined musculature in Hulk's arm, but especially in the forearm, it's a little bit subtle. So I'm using shadows to really exaggerate that a little bit, create, you know, the sense of a bit more of a crease than the model really provides. Similarly, I really want to develop the elbow here. It's kind of got a bit of a rectangular shape to it, so you can see I'm just kind of working my way around it, and then pulling that same shadow back up underneath the bicep. On the torso, under the arm, I'm being a little bit more liberal and really filling in the area with shadow. Now on the hand, it's actually an upward facing area and I don't really want a lot of shadow because it shouldn't be dark, but I do want a little bit of shadow to help just isolate the digits from each other and kind of help define the shapes of the hand. Up next, I'm gonna be using P3 Coal Black as a base coat for Hulk's hair. Incubi Darkness from Citadel works just as well. So the important thing to keep in mind with Hulk's hair is that because it's a sculpted detail, it actually overhangs his face. So you want to make sure you look at the model from underneath and just make sure you paint the underside of that hair and be careful not to paint his forehead at the same time. You know, a lot of minis have pretty flat static hair and Hulk's hair has a pretty good fop to it, so it just takes a little bit of a different approach than you might be used to. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Corvus Black and add a layer of shadow to the hair. And it's not a true shadow, I'm actually using this to kind of create an extra layer of separation between the hair and the skin. Because the hair has a greenish tint and so does the skin. I just want something kind of in there to break them up. And so I'm doing that by adding a near black 
kind of an outline around the hair. I'm also using it to just accent these little, you know, spiky bits on top of Hulk's head. And just outlining around the back of the neck as well. So next I'm going to add a highlight to Hulk's hair, and I'm going to be using P3 Trollblood base for that. It's a very nice light blue, and it complements coal black really well. Now the highlight here, I want to focus kind of towards what you would call like the crown of the head. Sort of, you know, across the sweep of the top of the forehead, and kind of in that circular motion, but also capturing the sort of shape of the hair, because the hair has a sweeping kind of, you know, back to front feel to it. And I want to make sure that shape, that flow, is really maintained by the highlights. So what I'm doing is kind of just an alternating zigzag that joins each of the little sort of clumps of hair together in a kind of just a perpetual highlight that goes roughly from his left ear right across to his right temple. And then a few extra little highlights on the little, you know, the spiky bits of hair kind of towards the back of the head. The last step of the hair here, I'm bringing out a little bit of Citadel Blue Horror. I just felt like the hair could use one more highlight. And this is a pretty stark, bright light blue. It's almost an off-white. And I'm using this to make the edges of the existing highlights a little more defined. Basically make it look like there's almost like a crease or a sharp, you know, plane in the hair that really isn't there because the model's got fairly soft edges. This is going to make the edges look just a little bit harsher. I'm going to base coat Hulk's eyes in an off-white using P3 Sickly Skin. The reason I'm using an off-white is that gives me a little bit of room to add a white highlight, whereas if I went straight to white, you can't go any higher than that. I'm also going to use this same color to paint Hulk's teeth while I'm at it. They don't need to be super pearly white, so it's okay if they're a little bit off-white. I mean, that's just how most people's teeth look. Pure, stark, white teeth just look weird. Up next, I'm going to be using Amethyst Rose from P3 to paint the inside of Hulk's mouth. Any other dark red, such as Corn Red, would work just fine as well. I'm also going to mix in a little bit of Sickly Skin, or off-white from the teeth to make a light pink that I can use to highlight the tongue. Using a little bit of the coal black that's already on the palette, I start painting the pupils on the eyes, and I'm doing this by basically painting a straight line through the middle of each pupil, and then just widening the line by painting adjacent to it until both of them feel like they're the same size and looking in the same direction. Using a very small dot of P3 Mora White, just a nice clean pure white, I'm adding a little glint to each pupil. So it's going to be just a tiny dot to the top and right of each pupil, just kind of overlapping between the pupil and the white of the eye. I'm going to be mixing some Scarsnick Green and some Cygnus Yellow from P3 to create a bit of a brighter green with just a little skew of yellow in it. It's going to be about two-thirds Scarsnick to one-third Cygnus Yellow. And the idea here is just to add an extra dimension to the skin because there's some areas like the shoulders that are really big and kind of detailless. I want to just, you know, create a little more volume there. And then there's things like the knuckles that you really just want to have be a bit of a focal point, kind of have them pop off the model a little bit. And so that extra little highlight just brings them forward. The face is another area where you want that extra layer highlighting because you want facial features to be very distinct and easy to read. You want them to be noticeable from basically across the table or across the room. Maybe not across the room. But even in a little extra highlight goes a long way to improving the contrast in the different facial details and making things like cheekbones and eyebrow ridges just a little bit more noticeable.
Now I'm pulling out the Troll Blood base again. This is the color I used to highlight Hulk's hair. And I'm actually going to use this to add a little bit of a highlight into some of the blue glowy spots. And we've got this kind of light coming up from underneath the model, this blue light. And it's only there because the card art had it and I kind of wanted to mimic that look. But the Lothar blue I use is just a little bit too blue. I want something a little bit more desaturated. And that's where Troll Blood base, which is already on my palette, is going to just do the job for me. Now we're on to Hulk's pants, and I picked out one of my favorite purples to work with, P3's Bad Bruise. This is just a simple, straightforward base coat, so I'm going to skip most of it. You know what a base coat is. So with the Bad Bruise base coat down, I'm going to come in with some Citadel Jean Sealer Purple and start adding some highlights. The highlights are going to be very similar to the way I highlighted Hulk's hair in that... They kind of follow the ripples of the pants or imply some ripples because there's not really a lot there. The pants are relatively textureless, but I want to create the idea that there's, you know, some fluid motion, you know, some folding of the fabric. And so I'm kind of creating this highlight almost in a zigzag pattern or at least with sort of a toothiness to the edge just to kind of give the impression that the fabric has a little roll and wave to it. I'm also really just focusing on the front of the left thigh, the back of the right leg, around the waist, around the ankles, and Hulk's butt, because Hulk's butt is a, actually a pretty prominent detail. And it's got some interesting geometry. It's kind of done as two more or less flat planes that have some sharper edges to them. And so it gives us an opportunity to just really follow the geometry of the model and create a highlight that accentuates that. So here I'm looking at the outside of the right leg, and I'm doing basically what I did for both the hair and the left leg, which is kind of a zigzag, sort of sawtooth style pattern, to imply a little bit of roll and fold to the fabric. It's pretty easy to do, you just sort of make these almost like a Z style pattern, and then just fill in the gaps between them to make sure they kind of flow into each other. Now I'm back to working with a little bit of Lothurn blue, and if you remember, this is the blue color I used for those under lighting effects that are just all over Hulk's skin. Of course, I just didn't have a base coat on the pants when I did those, so I'm just repeating that process now on the pants. With the first layer of blue glow added to the pants, I'm going back in with a little bit of Citadel Blue Horror to add that extra little point of brightness just to a few spots. To paint the base, I'm going to be using P3's Iron Hull Gray. You can also mix Mechanicus Santa Gray with Administratum Gray if you're using Citadel paints. This is going to be gray paint over gray primer, so except for the parts where I'm covering up some green I splashed on the base, you're going to really see nothing happening here. And speaking of Administratum Gray, I'm going to be using that now as an edge highlight for all the rubble on the base. This is really straightforward. I'm just literally grabbing those edges and maybe adding a few freehand streaks to imply a little bit of surface texture. But it's really kind of just following the lines. There's not a lot of imagination here. I'm cycling back to Cole Black for a moment because when I went to paint his hair, I forgot about his eyebrows. So let's make sure Hulk has eyebrows. Now with most of my comic style painting, I like to use a heavy black ink to do all my line work. In this case, the card art actually has toned lines. There's green lines, dark green lines on Hulk's skin, dark purple lines on his pants, things like that. So I've decided to mix P3 Gnarls Green and P3 Thamar Black to create a really dark green I can use for lining. 
Now I'm probably about two-thirds Gnarls Green to one-third Thamar Black here. And the idea is that it's not quite black, it definitely still has a hint of green, but I'm going to be using this rather than an ink to do my line work. So with the line work here, there's basically two kinds of details I'm focused on. The first is, of course, just deep creases and crevices. Areas of the model you would expect to find, you know, a defining line, right? Like, in his armpit between his, you know, his pec and his bicep, there's a bit of a crease there. Of course, around facial details, around the eyes, underneath the nose. But then there's some other areas where I want to add them to embellish just the shape language I've already kind of developed on the model. So what I'm doing is most of the places where there's one of those darker green, the Mage Hunter green shadows, I'm adding the line above the shadow. And the idea is that that sort of helps create the idea of a bit more of a crease in the model surface than there actually is. It creates a visual impression of the shadow being a little bit harder and then softening again underneath because the lighter, the Mage Hunter green is a little bit lighter than my line color. And so it makes the model look like it's just got some extra extra folds, extra geometry to it, than it really does. And that helps Hulk look a little bit bulkier, a little bit more menacing, because it just gives his... It gives a little more volume to his musculature than there really is on the model. The model's, you know, a little bit plain. And not necessarily in a bad way. I mean, it fits the art style. It's a very chibi kind of model. But we can kind of create the idea that the muscles bulge a little more by making the shadows appear to be cast darker. Now you'll see here one other place I focus on those is his cheekbone and that's kind of the same idea. I want the cheekbones to have a little more of a implied shape to them. Make them stand out a little bit more, make the face look a little bit more angular, a little more distinct and the black lining just above the shadow really creates the idea that there's a harder edge there and I think it makes the model more striking. Now there is one thing I do with this model that I didn't capture on camera and I do apologize in advance for that. The blue glow on his left cheek, after I finished the whole model, like a day or two later, I just looked at the model and I found it really distracting. It didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. So you'll see at the end of this video, I'll have a 360 degree rotation of the model and you'll see that's gone now. And Basically, I just I looked at the model and I just, you know, decided I didn't really like it. It didn't work the way I wanted it to. It was distracting. It created some weird volumes on his face. And so I just took the Mage Hunter green and just softly blurred it out. So there's the, the slightest hint of it there, but it's not as prominent as it is on any other muscle on his body. Hulk's hands are probably the most detailed part of this whole model after his face and there's a lot of opportunity here to add darker lines to really kind of bring the the expression of the hand out. You know, you want the creases in the knuckles where they fold. His hands are actually sculpted quite angular. They're they're kind of the fingers are very sort of rectangular in shape with just slightly smoothed edges. And that gives us some nice relatively sharp lines to follow. And it really helps bring out the shape of the model by adding these black lines or these dark green lines to these areas. So here I'm adding a quick line around the top of the fingertip on the outward facing side of it. And that sort of just catches the edge of the fingernail more than anything. I don't want to fully detail the fingernails. I think that's going too far on a model like this. But at least acknowledging the fact that the fingernails are there and they create a, you know, sort of a blunt edge to his fingers that's just a little more formed than, you know, a soft rounded fingertip might be. Now, if you want any of the contours on Hulk's body to appear a little bit softer, you just skip this step and just leave that Mage Hunter green, that sort of darker green shadow we created already. Just leave it there without the accent of the really dark green line. And it'll seem just a little bit softer than any of the details that we've given this dark green line to. Now that about wraps up the painting here on Hulk. The only part I didn't capture in this video was adding some black ink lining to the base just to add some detail to the concrete rubble that he's standing on. That's pretty straightforward and I think you can figure that out on your own. Otherwise, feel free to watch any of my Marvel Crisis Protocol videos because I'd use that same technique in pretty much all of them. 
I really enjoyed exploring this style and doing something a little more almost childlike compared to my normal comic style work where I use a lot of heavy black ink. I hope you try this as well, and if you do, please tag me on social media at underscore Epic Duck on Instagram or Twitter or Epic Duck Studios on Facebook. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Every little bit helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, puts a roof over my family's head and food on the table. You can also join me for live painting shows several times a week at twitch.tv slash epic duck studios. I'd love if you came by and watched the show sometime and followed the channel. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who supported my content over the years, both past and present. It's been an absolutely wild ride, and I couldn't do this without all the wonderful fans and flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you really make this worth doing. So let's just keep on doing this together, making more content, and just being fantastic together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.